Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I came across a pretty fascinating project that I wanted to share with you, uh, done by a good friend of mine, Ron Block, and I would like to have him go over that with me. So, Ron, welcome. Good morning, Wade. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, the more I age, the longer that history gets. But <laughs> briefly, <Which is> good. <laughs> uh, born in the Bronx, went to the New York City school system, engineering high school, uh, college economics and sociology. I went to work for a corporation and did some graduate work in Chicago. And I was fortunate enough, they transferred me all around the country. So I got to, to see a lot of, of different varieties. Uh, the last transfer was out to California in 1974. And when they asked me to leave, I said, I don't think so. <laughs> so I've been around since 1974 uh, in the state of California, having a wonderful time. Formed our own business with my wife in 1978 and had it till 2006. Hmm. It was an international business and it took us all around the world. Nice, so you got to do a little traveling with that business. Then. I've been loving it. Wow, that is outstanding. So tell me, how did you get involved with Rotary? Uh, I don't know if it was sneaky or not, but we had a good friend, uh, Francois Zani, who okay. owned a restaurant, Le Rendezvous. And one day he asked me to come to lunch, out of the blue, uh, and, and served me wonderful sand dabs and a bottle of white wine. <laughs> then told me he was going to be president, incoming president of a Rotary Club and would I like to join. I said, clue me in about it because I didn't know really about Rotary in 1996. Okay. Uh, I said, yeah, sounds very interesting. And he asked me, would I mind being community service chair? I said, what's my budget? He said, told me a number and I said, wonderful. And so my first six months after I joined, I had the opportunity to be community service chair, and we brought a whole bunch of things every week to the club and to the Conejo Valley. Hmm. And the name of the club? Newberry Park Rotary Club. There you go, sounds, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I was going to get it in. <laughs> yeah, we got to give them a plug. So um, you're here because of a very fascinating playground that you helped develop, and we want to hear about that one. So tell us what this uh, Dreamcatcher is all about. Well, I, I got to build up to it a little bit. Okay. Um, I got involved in the in National Immunization Day. I went to Ghana. Okay. That's got for, in programs for, for polio. Right. Okay. In 2001. Okay. Uh, got involved in Romania for a number of things and formed the first uh, inter-country committee with the Romanian district, with our district here, 5240, uh, medical and a whole bunch of things. Did programs in Honduras and Korea. And then about seven years ago, uh, I had a friend who moved to the area and he had a special needs child, autistic, kind of up on the spectrum. Uh, and we became good friends. I asked him, he joined our club, Newberry Park Rotary Club. And I, I started to learn about special needs. Uh, I joined the uh, Central Coast Committee uh, Developmentally Disabled, which is part of the state to learn even more about it, and I became fascinated. And I thought, uh, when the incoming president six years ago said, I want to do something spectacular that makes an impact on our community, and there are five clubs in our group area, all very active and all integrated in doing things together. And I said, because I had read about a club in Atlanta that built a special needs playground, and I said, how about we build a special needs playground? So they said, wonderful idea. I went to our Conejo Recreation and Park District, which runs all of them. It's a 50-year-old organization. Talked to the general manager, who is a friend and a fellow Rotarian, and he said, we have one. But we were just wondering, it's an old one, and we just moved some area and have three times the space. We didn't know what we were going to do. I said, how about we enlarge and modernize a 20-year-old playground and make it more effective for special needs. And he said, it works for me. So karma is, comes to you when you take the road and move direction. Yeah. Uh, I put a presentation together for the board of directors, 5-0. Uh, they voted, go for it. And we developed a budget. Uh, now, the biggest program that the clubs ever did in our community was maybe $100,000. I said to the people in charge, don't give me a budget, just tell me what you need. 
and they came up with half a million dollars. <laughs> Everybody laughed at me, Wade. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we developed a budget, and I started uh, getting, looking for grants, uh, joining areas, talking to the immediate Rotary Clubs and the Rotary Clubs around us, getting a lot of, hey, we, we love to help. It's very necessary, since our community is very welcoming for special needs and handicapped. The first thing I, I found out was in a special needs playground, the most usage was normal kids kids without a special need. And the integration of those children with children somewhere on the autism spectrum or in a wheelchair or deaf or blind is integral to the building of societies and cultures. Mm. And I think this is even better. Yeah. And so I started to raise funds. Five years later, <laughs> we wound up with $640,000. And the dream catcher was kind of a natural appellation because dream catchers from the, the Indian history keeps bad spirits away from an environment. So the Rotary Dream Catcher Playground allowed the good spirits that evolve in it to blossom between neuronormal kids, as they're called, and kids on the spectrum or with any handicaps. We cut the ribbon six months ago, and it was just wonderful. I go back today and watch. And it's just a, a, a heart, it brings a smile to your heart without any hesitation. That sounds great. Um, we got some pictures. Why don't we go ahead and jump into the pictures so the audience can actually see what this looks like and get it kind of sounds a, like more, a more than a feel here. So we have pictures. Uh, the first picture shows actually your sign. I'm guessing that that is a, the completed project right there. That is a sign indicating it was going to be completed. Was going to be completed. Right. It, okay. As I said, it did take five years, yeah. and it was done in three sections as we attained the money for it. Okay. Everybody, the uh, county government, the city government, tremendous number of corporations and individuals uh, donated hundreds and hundreds uh, to uh, for as much as 50000 from one individual wow to a $5 check that I received from somebody. So it, it, was a, it was just heartwarming to see the community get together to develop this. Nice, very nice. Next picture I have, um, I believe that's probably the playground in process, correct? It, it is, and uh, there used to be park ranger trucks parked there. Oh, okay. And so they moved those to another location, as I indicated, and this being a thousand oaks, the Conejo Valley, you can't build under certain oak trees. So we had to move equipment. We got some wonderful equipment. Uh, one, you may have a picture of it, so I'll get to that. Okay. But the first two pictures are uh, the Therapeutic Recreation Center, the okay. third one. Okay, so that's the construction picture we have that. Right. Showing that, and then this is, I imagine you're tearing everything down and starting over there. And autism is affected, autistic kids, by fluorescence. Okay. So it's very important to transition to LED. Okay. Uh, and so that's one of the things, one of the clubs stepped up big time. I have to give them a kick. Thousand Oaks Rotary Club uh, contributed very highly and very often to the development of the Therapeutic Recreation Center, nice. which is a learning center. And it was when the Special Olympics were held in, in uh, Los Angeles, a big meeting was held at this facility because of what, we were, what the Rotary was doing. Wow. Very nice. Next picture we have, it looks like uh, this may be in process, maybe a party or something like that. This was prior to the ribbon cutting when it was completed. Okay. And the uh, recreation center trains kids, even with special needs, to serve, to cook, to oh. clean. Okay. So they become an integral part of their society. Right. One of the wonderful things to realize is that these kids, with their limitations, can achieve a higher percentage of their potential than you and I. Right. We purportedly have an unlimited potential. They have a limited one. But by serving or in grocery stores or wherever they now serve in our community, they can support themselves, which is very necessary right. in relation to what's doing. And this is a training environment for them. You got it. Okay. And then the next one, uh, 
little bit of basketball or something going on? Is that a There are a ga game? games and dances okay. uh, of special needs. Okay. And there's what they call play fields, too, where it's a hard surface, and even kids in wheelchairs take part. Hmm. Everybody gets a hit. Everybody gets the first base. Got it. Everybody cheers. Nice. And it, it's, it's heartwarming. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. And this is part of the facilities then? That this is part of the facility. Oh, wow, nice. And it's good the, size. The, the next picture is showing the catering that they do. Okay. There are camp sessions here. One of the most important things is kids with autism tend to run. And anybody who has a two, three, or four-year-old, no matter what their condition, tend to run. Right. And when moms and dads take them to the park, and they come back from the park, the, the kids take a nap, but the parents are exhausted. This playground is totally fenced. So the moms come, and the dads come, and the caretakers come, and they sit and they can converse about mutual problems and, and mutual sharing, and not worry about the kids running off. True. Now, now what is the uh, actual time of operation for this, the, the playground and the program itself? It's donation. Um, so time-wise, I'm talking about oh. they come in maybe after school or midday or? It depends. Um, the age bracket for recognition and diagnosis of special needs uh, has now gone down to two or three or four years old. Mm. Okay. Uh, federal statistics show that 60 to 70 percent of the population has some kind of special need, mm. whether it's hearing impaired, sight impaired, walking, or on the, the spectrum itself. Um, that's tremendous. 68%, uh, yeah. uh, uh, one out of six, every 68. 12 to 13% of the population has a special needs. Mm. If you multiply that by parents, brothers, sisters, caretakers, 25 to 28% of the population is involved of your community, mm. of our community, of practically every community. Mm. And so it's an all year round situation. Okay. Moms and caretakers bring two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight year old preschool kids in the mornings. There are classes throughout the day and after school. One of the things I learned uh, was someone said to me, well, what about old folks with autism? Because there are people in our population that are, have been hidden. Because it, it's, it's something that wasn't sure. accepted years ago. Right. They like to come and swing on the swings too. They like to come in an environment which is comfortable for them. And so the expanse is dramatic and people use the playground and the park. They come from 30, 40 miles away wow. because it's fenced. One of the, the items is called a tandem swing, very expensive. Someone who can't walk, a child or, or, sem or, or a young adult, gets in a swing and the next swing is by someone who can swing. And that person starts the action on the other one. Oh. So they play together without the realization of any effort. Okay. And it's a reward to both. Oh, that's interesting. And I literally go and watch that happen. So, so the one swing actually mo puts the second one in motion. The one that can't uh, swing. Oh, and, and, it's, and you see a smile occur. Definitely. On faces. I take my grandkids there. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. That is great. <laughs> okay, next picture, probably part of the catering there, right? Those are the servers. Okay, yeah. good, good. And the catering is open for anybody? Anybody could just go ahead and Any, it's, request? It's a neighborhood park. It's in okay. Old Meadows Park, the Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground. I must say that Kenyaho Recreation and Park Districts has built they have thousands of acres under their auspices and play fields. They have never named an area that they developed. The first designated name for this playground was Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground, and they allowed that. Nice. So Rotary has the first major impact, and it was, it was a pleasure because the members of the board, uh, they're not only Rotarians, uh, but they come from the all, all the services who realize what kind of impact that has. Wow, wow. But the next several pictures are the ribbon cutting. The ribbon cutting, okay. Yeah. So who's the one that's speaking in that one? The good looking guy with this jacket on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly my question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good.
And, and then comes the ribbon cutting. And the ribbon cutting, correct. And again, uh, the park and recs, which own this facility, and they've owned it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. As I said, they've been audited for 50 years. There was no hesitation about accepting the funds. And the designation, they contracted, all the contractors, multiple bids, followed great procedure. And it made it easy uh, for us in Rotary to get donations from the community. Mm -hmm. and, and they have a designated board for those people and groups that donated more than $5,000. Okay, oh good, and that's, I see that, that's probably on the wall right there. In it's the, on the wall in the Therapeutic Recreation Center. Good. And is that a continuing uh, recognition? In other words, you're still collecting and gathering funds? It is, it, well, we're not raising any funds anymore, okay. but they raise funds throughout the entire year. Okay. And there are small charges where they can charge for camps and facilities and, and uh, uh, parties and dances. Okay. And that helps to facilitate it. Uh, but there are fundraisers from time to time to keep it up. But, but what's the pleasure is that we know that this facility for the next 20 years will benefit thousands and thousands of right. kids who will never know who did it and who will receive pleasure from it. Mm, that is great. Now, have you created also an endowment for the ongoing maintenance of that, or is that something that the community is doing? There is some fundraisers for it, but the, uh, the Recreation and Park District has that funding. Very good. Yeah, they okay. raise funds all year round for a bunch of different facilities. And we do get the Therapeutic Recreation Center, which is now tied together with the Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground, gets grants from time to time. Good. And training takes place there. Okay. Oh, and how to deal with this stuff. Good. So the next picture we have, actually, um, probably uh, the audience can see it close enough, but with the names there, rather than singling them out for what they've contributed, how about why they contributed? Do you have any people that are, you have special stories for? People that have been involved with you from the beginning and that have contributed for? We had a board of advisors, mm -hmm. and um, b both uh, all Rotarians, mm -hmm. And it's a totally donated time. All our time over the five years was donated, as was Kinejo Recreation and Park District. Although the therapeutic recreationist, Cecilia Laufenberg, is really the queen of knowledge in Ventura County. I have to give her a lot of credit for trying to educate me. And I say trying so she's with my done foot a good on job. first base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a marketing guy. She's done quite well. <laughs> yeah, and she would always look at me and say, Really? <laughs> but it was, a, it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, the last picture is my wife, my daughter, and myself. Okay. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, Conejo Recreation and Park has a 501c3 called Play Conejo, okay. where the funds are donated to in a tax-deductible fashion. My daughter is on that uh, Play Conejo board. She's currently secretary and in charge of the fundraisers. Okay. So I'm, I'm proud to say, they say that uh, she's a chip off the old block, <laughs> but now I'm known as Bridget's dad. <laughs> well, so, good for you. Which is always a pleasure. <laughs> that, is, a, that is a huge pleasure. You got it. <laughs> so um, tell me a little bit about the Rotary experience in this new partnership. How has that worked out, and is it something you see that would benefit other, other communities in getting involved like this? Without a doubt. Um, my first part, as I indicated, was educating myself. Not only to uh, a good idea, because I thought it was a great idea, I didn't know what it encompassed, how many in the community, what it needed within the community, and who else would participate and, and come on board instead of just saying to me, hey, that's a great idea, <laughs> which a lot of people did. Right. So after the initial technical education, technical learning about it, learning about numbers in the community, is the community acceptable to it? I must say our, our Kenya Valley Unified School District is also uh, uh, helps with special needs and special education, very welcoming, including Newberry Park High School mm -hmm. as a special facility for it. Um, as I went around to uh, other Rotary Clubs, yeah, we'll participate. The first person I talked to was our supervisor in our district, Linda Parks. And she was tickled pink. And she said, maybe I can get you five or $10,000. Well, the, the geography for this playground pulls from 20 to 30 miles around mm. because of the special equipment. 
which encompasses most of the southern part of our county. She took it to the board of directors and called me up and said, can you guys come and, and address us uh, in two days? <laughs> so I called Jim Friedel, the head of Kineho Recreation and Park. I called Cecilia Laufenberg. I called a woman who was then the head of uh, Thousand Oak Club, and I represented the playground as chair of the board of, of advisors. We made our presentation, and all of a sudden, Linda said, I would like to move to get, give $25,000 to the Rotary Dream Catch a Playground. And, and they all voted five nothing, and, and I got up to thank them, and I said, has anybody ever kissed the five uh, <laughs> supervisors to our district? They gave us the seed money. Nice. Then I applied for a, a grant from the city of Thousand Oaks who benefited, boom, another $20,000. And then I started to, to go to the area and, and go to the main employers, banks, donators. Montecito was very big. Montecito Bank and Trust uh, gave us a wonderful grant. I think we were the only grant out of Santa Barbara County that year. Uh, uh, very pleased. And their people in the bank voted for our group. So we knew the acceptance and we knew the breadth of people who contacted special needs. I met a woman uh, at the playground who had a, a twins. One was normal, one was special needs. She drove from 40 miles away because she used to live in the area and she knew it, and she spreads the words. Mm. So getting uh, together took five years. We have an area, a, uh, a funding uh, group in Ventura County. I joined it to learn to get grants. Hmm. They taught us how, and, and they had a, uh, a, a list of who gives grants to this type of facility. Right. Right. And I went to that, and I learned more and more and more. And the ones in the area, in California, in Oregon, in New York, give to education and grants. So the more people I talked to, and I addressed a lot of Rotary Clubs, as you could well imagine, yeah. and wherever they called me for Five years, I went and I talked. <laughs> Good. And everybody got on board from corporations, as I indicated, from uh, club groups, uh, from women's groups, men's groups, uh, churches. Uh, we have a lot of churches in Thousand Oaks and, and a, uh, a mosque and temples. And I went to address a group of 30 of their leaders. And I said, this is the first time I'm reversing passing the hat. <laughs> and everybody joined in. So the entire community over a period of five years joined in. And as I said, we had hundreds and hundreds of donations of varying amounts. Sure. It was very rewarding. The name Dreamcatcher, it is a fascinating name. You did mention that's part of uh, the, the model of it. But where did that come from and who came up with the name for that? I had a, uh, a friend uh, who taught me how to make masa, by the way, Okay. <laughs> who was half Apache and half Hispanic. And uh, he was kind of a dad to me, called me Mijo. Uh, and uh, he, his name, his Indian name, uh, was Growling Bear. And we were very close. And he had a dream catcher. And he taught me the history of dream catchers keeping uh, bad spirits away, kind of like feng shui and a curved sidewalk. Right. And so when I started to build this, uh, one of the problems with special needs is the fear of being in public and being able to deal with your special need, both of the parents, the caretaker, and the child as they get older, right. and they realize there's a difference. Mm -hmm. So Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground keeps away those spirits because it encompasses a welcome, an acceptance, and a joining. That's very good. Your uh, participation by your club, um, size of your club, how many members do you have, and then were they all involved with this? We have about 30, and yeah, we were all involved. Uh, over the five years, we dedicated, most Rotary Clubs have fundraisers every year, as, as you know, more than one sometimes. We dedicated the proceeds from those fundraisers to the Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground. 
So for 30 members, uh, when we get the list of donation within a district by club, for a couple of years, our club was pretty high with donation <laughs> per member. And a couple of our members stepped up very strongly, as members did from clubs, since this was our community. And this is really the rotary bulwark of giving the community uh, a $640,000 gift. And the Therapeutic Recreation Center was another quarter of a million dollar gift by Thousand Oaks Rotary and other clubs. So this facility was a million dollar gift by our local Rotary clubs of, of five clubs with probably a little over 300 members. <laughs> And uh, part of the funding, was that also done with a grant, a matching grant of some sort? No, we didn't quite fit okay. a matching grant. Really? However, yeah, it was, interesting. it was interesting because I'm not a shy guy, <laughs> and I talked to Chicago on a number of occasions. However, the money that comes back to our district, clubs were able to direct that to the Rotary Dreamcatcher Playground, and a number of clubs donated that money that Rotary gives back to the district uh, to the club's usage, and that's the way the grant money came back. So the district, there's any funds returning back, the mature right. funds? Right, DDF came back. DDF came back, oh, that's good. So you did actually have some money for that. We had some money you from, need to have from, it authorized from Rotary, then. right. Yeah. I would have loved to have more. Uh, that's, that's true, <laughs> but it sounds like you had plenty to do. I fought the good Until battle. Until you do the next project. <laughs> right. When they went to world grants, there were some very definitive definitions. That would have been a little bit true. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, um, we're just about out of time. Give us uh, the address. Tell us where this place is at so we have people out there that may want to visit it. Um, Real quickly, give us a, you have an address, a location. Right. We have an address and a location. Uh, you, can, you can go to rotarydreamcatcher.org. Okay. And there's pictures and an address there. Perfect. Conejo Recreation and Park District Therapeutic Recreation Center. And uh, it's a 501c3 if you want to make a continuing grant. <laughs> there you go. And I am available for calls uh, to show the development and the infrastructure. My back, you know, every rotary <laughs> has a title. I'm an infrastructure development guy. Great. Well, Ron, thank you very much for your time. Outstanding Wait, it's a, project. Um, it's a pleasure. Keep up the good work and keep me posted on your next one. Project I look forward to it. Sounds good. And with that, everybody, thank you very much. Visit Dreamcatcher. It's one of those outstanding projects. I've seen it. I sent it in action. I was able to be part of that one. So with that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.